made of Hollywood. The action comedy My Spy The Eternal City, starring Chloe Coleman and Dave Bautista, is made in Hollywood. You know, everything was bigger and it was better and it was it was fun. It was like being on vacation and it was like being on vacation with family. Made of Hollywood. Also on today's show, Freddie Prince Jr.'s perfect life begins to unravel in the mystery thriller The Girl in the Pool. It's what every actor who gets known for doing one thing and they only want to try something else and they want to, they want to show you what else they can do, this was that opportunity. Plus, Michael Monroe goes in pursuit of a serial killer in the horror thriller Long Legs, and we also look at what's new on Blu-ray with Marisa Abella and Madeline Petch. This week on Made in Hollywood. Made in Hollywood. Dave Bautista becomes entangled in a deadly terrorist plot after volunteering to chaperone his stepdaughter's trip to Europe in the action comedy My Spy, The Eternal City. I need you back in the field, JJ. When I moved here three years ago, I made... Yeah, I know. You made a promise. No more field work. Focus more on intel and family. First, JJ's in total dad mode in this film. It's all about being a dad. His, his mission in life is to be a good dad. She's a teenager now, which is kind of crazy to think about. I think it was bittersweet. I think it was important to keep her personality from the first film, but also bring her into this new world. Obviously, Chloe Coleman has uh, grown. And then some folks were wondering, well, what is the, the dynamic going to be? Because it used to be, you know, big guy, little girl, and now it's big guy, teenager. Oh my God, my school choir's going to Italy. Italy! Chaperoni, you serious? It's like I don't even recognize you. You just sit there like an avocado getting older and softer. Let's get this show on the road. I play uh, a character named Nancy Buck. She is a principal of a high school that Chloe Coleman's character, Sophie attends, finds herself in Italy, uh, escorting the high school choir, and then the stakes get higher. Anna Ferris is wonderful. She's also a comedic legend, and just as an actor, just a wonderful actor, and a very wonderful person, a deep feeling person. And I really enjoyed uh, getting to meet her again, a, a hero of mine from all of the films that she has done. Are you sure you can handle this? JJ, I'm going to have fun on this trip. And if you're going to get in my way, consider yourself the opposition. Very, very fun to play the villain. We all do have to play the nice person all day long. When you've ordered your cappuccino at the coffee shop and someone behind you says something you don't like, you can't slap the beverage out of their hand. You have to say nothing. But as Bishop Crane in My Spy, The Eternal City, I can steal your drink, drink your drink, and throw it out the window, and nobody says anything. I need my number one bull elephant heading this mission. On it. Damn. The first movie was uh, very successful. It was the third biggest movie of 2020. And so Amazon rewarded us with a, a much bigger budget. As far as like coming back, stepping back into the role, it was just effortless. We've been friends for so many years now, and so it was very comfortable. There was no anxiety about performance because we were all so comfortable with each other. So this one was just, it was just easier. All the superlatives apply. It was just, again, fit like a glove, so easy to come back, and then just so grateful to everyone and to Pete for expanding my character. Acknowledge me! He's so embarrassing. <laughs> Please stop, stop. <laughs> okay, one, one more, one more. When the, the sequel came around, everyone was very excited, and it was, it was kind of like going back to a comfortable you know, summer camp. I will always have this romantic reminiscence when I think about shooting this movie because it was, the experience was so positive, so wonderful. It was just an honor to be a part of that storytelling. And I think that, you know, and Dave and I always talk about this, you know, we're storytellers. You know, everything was bigger and it was better and it was, it was fun. It was like being on vacation and it was like being on vacation with family. <laughs> Oh, I don't think he's already. Yeah, I didn't even do that. Coming up, Freddie Prince Jr. desperately tries to hide the truth in the mystery thriller, The Girl in the Pool. And we also look at what's hot on screen with Micah Monroe. To find out where to watch any movie, check out moviephone.com. Find it, watch it. It's what every actor who gets known for doing one thing and they only want to try something else and they want to, they want to show you what else they can do, this was that opportunity. Made in Hollywood. Made in Hollywood. 
After his mistress is found dead, a family man becomes entangled in a dangerous web of deception as Freddie Prince Jr. stars in the mystery thriller, The Girl in the Pool. Sorry I'm late. Happy birthday. Mm. Oh, it's gotten it really close. I have dinner plans with Kristen later. Come on. I just want to celebrate with you. Tom? Tom! You okay? I don't know. It was easy to say yes. This character was the opposite of every character that I've ever played. Um, so it's what every actor who gets known for doing one thing and they only want to try something else and they want to, they want to show you what else they can do. This was that opportunity. Happy birthday. She got the script like three days before we shot and her kid said, it's Freddie, do it. And she said, okay, I'm gonna. And I told her how thankful and grateful I was that, that she was gonna come and play again and that we would kick ass and how much I needed her and, and, and would depend on her in scenes. And she laughs at that, but it's the truth. The running joke while we were filming was I didn't really read the script a lot at all, but I just wanted to show up and be there and have fun and be there for him. And I had the best time. Are you and mom like getting a divorce? No, your mother and I love each other very much. Okay, just breathe. Everything's gonna be okay. Because of where I was in my life a year ago, just there's a there's a lot going on. It was like a restart for me. I love Monica a lot. I told her how much I would depend on her in scenes. I knew that I wouldn't have to worry about any scene that her and I were in. No matter, no matter what. I'm just trying to find my wife. I was able to get into her Uber account, and the last location she came to was here, but uh, her phone keeps going to voicemail. They're in a failing marriage. It's failing because of Thomas's weaknesses, his insecurities, his lack of discipline and constitution, things like that. And if you look at like the three personality types, the alpha, beta, and omega, He's a beta, he's very susceptible to compliments and criticism. And you can see the Hannah character, his mistress, sort of pushing and pulling and playing with him how, whenever she wants, and he doesn't have any sort of defense for it. Here's what's hot on screen. An FBI agent in pursuit of a serial killer races to decipher a series of occult clues as Micah Monroe and Nicolas Cage star in the horror thriller, Long Legs. Is it scary being a lady FBI agent? Yeah. <coughs> Take a nice long look. The letter was left with the bodies. Signed with one word. <laughs> My first reaction was, I want to be a part of this. You know, it was Oz Perkins. We had talked first. I read the script, then we talked. I just loved where his head was, where he was going with it. Oz, who directed it, also wrote it, of course. When I first read this script, every bone in my body said, yes. I saw a beast rise up out of the sea with seven heads and ten horns. <gasps> Lee is, is very different from from me, from who I am. And, and I thought that that would be a very interesting challenge, sort of removing myself completely from this role. What aren't you telling me? He'll kill and kill again. I began with sort of going back, going back to her childhood. She obviously went through some very severe trauma. You know, that's what makes her who she is and how she goes through the world. I know you're not afraid of a little bit of dark. Because you are the dark. The central idea is that is that parents tell lies and stories to their children, that they that the parents are sort of in charge of the perception of a child and, and what a what a delicate responsibility that is. And that was what the movie was about for me. You could have made nice with me. The movie itself and the characters within the movie are people we people in the world we think we've seen before. Even the movie itself, we think it, it's familiar, we think we've seen it before, and it turns out not to be the case. Using Silence of the Lambs as sort of just this recognizable touch tone, it's like this, it's like a woman detective, and it's like she's out of her element, and it's like there's a killer that they can't find, and you know. But you didn't. And that has led to all. Connecting with Oz on our first Zoom meeting, 
I prayed even harder after that call that it had been as deep a connection on his end as it was on mine. I was just intrigued to see how we're gonna how we're gonna pull this story together. The idea was to really sort of tenderize the audience's um, consciousness and awareness and readiness for a, for a thing that they thought it was going to be, and then of course it's um it's not that. <laughs> To find out where to watch any movie, check out moviephone.com. Find it, watch it. Up next, we look at what's new on Blu-ray with the music biopic Back to Black and the horror thriller The Strangers Chapter One. I was really excited about Maya because it was one of the first times I've read a horror film where they had an incredibly strong female protagonist already on the page. Now available on Blu-ray. Marisa Abella portrays Amy Winehouse as the music biopic Back to Black chronicles the tumultuous recording of the iconic artist's groundbreaking second album. I want people to hear my voice. Amy! No, no, no. Do you know what girl power means to me? Sarah Vaughan, Lauren Hill. You need to know this. I ain't no Spice Girl. The preparation was a, was a, yeah, an, an, an intense one. It was different to anything I've ever done before as an actor. From primary school no, no, no. to sell out concerts. There's a lot of emotional prep and, and imaginative prep that goes into playing any part. But when someone is as intense as Amy Winehouse, as well as as recognizable as Amy and a real person, there's just a lot more sort of factual and technical work that goes into playing that person. Well, it's one of the best I've ever heard. That's my daughter. That's my Amy. It's a knife edge that you have to kind of walk in a way to make something like this um, because of that sort of sense of responsibility because she really lived. There's all of the kind of emotional nuances that you would normally do and then you have to layer on these mannerisms and her singing voice, the way she moves, the way she talks. The only way I felt I could do it in a way that sort of did justice to her was to use her voice as my kind of North Star. The highest charting album from a British female artist in the US ever. When they asked me to make this movie, you know, I found myself saying yes before I really processed the responsibility that I was taking on in a way. Um, but one of the reasons, or I guess primarily the only reason I wanted to make it was the music, because the music was such a gift. I don't bang out tenets by lunch. I need to live my songs. So that's what I'm going to go and do. Ready? Really, I wanted to sort of frame our story with Back to Black because it really felt so sort of truthful and so much so that her voice um, kind of leads us through the movie in that way. I felt a connection to Amy in my early, very, very early stages of, of research to her soul and to her wants and desires in life quite immediately and quite emotionally that I think carried me through the whole process. I write songs because I've got to make something good out of something bad. I just connected to something within her soul that was important to me. And you can sort of add all the affectations on top of a thing, but if the thing itself isn't real, then it counts for nothing. <laughs> Now available on Blu-ray. Three masked assailants terrorize a young couple forced to spend the night in a remote cabin as Madeleine Petch stars in the first entry of the horror franchise, The Strangers, Chapter One. What a cool little town. I actually like this so much better than a hotel. I bet the people who live here are really happy. I hadn't actually seen the 2008 movie, um, so when I booked it, that's like the first thing I did. But I had seen the Pray at Night one with Bailey Madison. She's a good friend of mine, and so when it came out, we all, we all went to go see it in theaters, and it was one of the first horror movies that I like really enjoyed. On the page, I fell in love with Maya because she's like something that you don't typically see as a female protagonist in horror. Tough crowd, right? 
Hi. Hi. I'm a big fan of the original Strangers. I wouldn't have done a remake or a sequel to it, but when I was presented with this challenge and opportunity of taking the premise of the original movie, which is a home invasion, very realistic home invasion story, and then expanding on that, I felt like you don't get this opportunity ever. <laughs> Is Tamara here? No. I think you have the wrong home. We saw tons and tons of actors and realized it, it, this can't be just any attractive, good actor. Uh, and when we met Madeleine, we were just really impressed by her intelligence and she very soon became our number one choice. I was really excited about Maya because it was one of the first times I've read a horror film where they had an incredibly strong female protagonist already on the page. She's got a healthy relationship, which I also feel like you never see in horror films. You are the messiest eater on the planet. I know and love him from Die Hard 2 and Cliffhanger, but like when I found out that it was Rennie, I was like so intimidated because his, his resume is insane. I was very intimidated going onto that set because you know he's such a legend and I, I didn't wanna I didn't want to disappoint. The minute you meet him, he's just kind and charming and lovely and humble and like so inviting that it was very easy to feel welcome. <laughs> dig deep into the psychology of these killers and study what makes a sociopath tick, but we don't wrap it up and put a bow on top of it. We, we want to keep it open like the original film was. Stay tuned, there's more coming up on Made in Hollywood. Made in Hollywood. Thanks for watching Made in Hollywood, powered by Movie Phone. For more behind the screen content, check out moviephone.com. Made in Hollywood.